Well, you didn't ask for it, you didn't care for it, but fucking I'm back with another Road to Gotham Knights video. 2009 was a great year. I started dating my wife in 2009, but more importantly, Arkham Asylum released. I played this game before I met Mrs. Zooty, so I've been in a relationship with this series longer. It's simple math. Now, last time I broke down basically everything in Arkham Asylum to a point where I was teaching you how to play the game. Arkham City plays near identical to Arkham Asylum, but obviously is a better setting, story, and more, so let's crack on with it then, eh? Arkham Asylum ended with Batman foiling the Joker's plans, you know, as Batman does. Now, the inmates of Arkham Asylum and Blackgate Prison have been taken to the new Arkham City, a section of Gotham City that's been isolated off, surrounded by walls and guards. The inmates can do as they please as long as they don't try to escape, obviously. Now, protesting against Arkham City, Bruce Wayne gets abducted and dropped into Arkham City by this entry's main villain, Hugo Strange. Of course, you're not Bruce Wayne for long as you investigate something called Protocol 10, navigate onto a nearby rooftop and call in a Batsuit. From here, you're given free reign in Arkham City to find out what Protocol 10 is and more. Now, from here on, I'll be spoiling some key moments in the game and boss fights, so heads up. The only way to get by in this place is to get ourselves some respect. Be here. That's how we get respect. Show them all that we do things. If your favorite Batman villain wasn't in Arkham Asylum, chances are they're in Arkham City, and the story of Arkham City weaves in more of Batman's rogues gallery. You'll sort of, but not really, go up against Two-Face as he dangles Catwoman over a vat of acid in a courthouse. Now, the level design for Arkham City is the best in the series by far. The courthouse is split in two and is obviously a perfect setting for Two-Face. The voice acting by Troy Baker for Two-Face is obviously fantastic as well. Now Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy also return to voice Batman and the Joker, but Arlene Sorkin's Harley Quinn is now being played by Tara Strong. What the hell are you doing here? You're supposed to be dead! Iterations of the characters in Arkham City are identical, if not similar, to their animated series versions. This version of Two-Face is better than Tommy Lee Jones and Aaron Eckhart's portrayals put together, as Two-Face has two voices and two personalities. Do I look scared, Harvey? You should. Fate is all that stands in our way. And if the coin says that your time is up, then you'll die. Anyway, someone, the Joker, also tries to kill Catwoman and you get to use your new and improved detective vision. Besides the fact that this detective vision does not give you a massive migraine when you activate it, you'll also be able to track bullets trajectory, which is pretty rad. You'll follow bullet trails, beat up some more goons as you'd expect, but the combat system is smoother than what we got in Arkham Asylum. The Predator's combat has also been updated and improved from last time, and even the tutorials are better. Batman will now talk to himself and explain the situation, helping you out, which, as Batman, makes sense. We've read in the comics countless times that Batman methodically plans out his movements in his head, and this is most likely the first time Batman fans get to see this outside of the comics. They don't know where I am. Screw Good. Up. Let's it's keep it that way. Us. Time to survey the room. Plan out my tactics. Four thugs, all armed, two hostages. This is going to be easy. As you continue in the campaign, you obviously explore more and more of Arkham City, and the amount of work Rock City have put into this game is outstanding. The Joker, being the fucking Joker, has taken over Sionis Steel Mill. Now, if you don't know who Roman Sionis is, he was the wasted opportunity played by Ewan McGregor in that awful Birds of Prey film. Little haircut. Uh, huh? Yeah, he's a thousand years old, and now wow. he's just an ornament in my living room. Ooh, I love it. We also got a load more landmarks like the Monarch Theatre, Crime Alley, the GCPD, the Iceberg Lounge, and more. Besides these iconic locations, there's also a turf war going on in Arkham City. Two-Face, the Penguin, and the Joker have their own goons fighting for control, each with their own unique uniform, and the Joker and Penguin even have some unique goons that are separated conjoined twins, which is pretty rad. As Arkham City is a prison city, there's obviously no civilians running around, and the city, or prison, is in chaos. Fuck, the Penguin destroys the bridges so Joker and Two-Face's men can't enter his territory. If you look outside and past the walls of Arkham City, you can see towering gothic-styled buildings and even spot the asylum in the distance. As boss fights go, Arkham City has learnt from their previous entry. There's no Titan Joker to go up against here, and Arkham City has what many consider to be the best boss fight in the entire series. Now, your first real fight will be against the Penguin who's got a hostage and he's using Mr. Freeze's gun. 
You'll navigate the Gotham Museum, which is not only stuffed with a load of Easter eggs, but it brings back a high tension moment from Arkham Asylum. You'll navigate through a open fish tank thing. Honestly, what would you call this room? Anyway, the Penguin has been playing with Mr. Freeze's gun in this open pool tank room and is drowning basically whoever he wants. Just like going up against Killer Croc in the Asylum, you'll need to slowly walk across the ice or it'll break. Now, if you did check out my Arkham Asylum review, you could see that I basically crouch ran that entire section of the game where you can't do that here in Arkham City. This moment is full of tension because a giant fucking shark is also in the room. If there's one thing that scares the fuck out of me, it's sharks. I'm like Indiana Jones with snakes, but with, well, virtual sharks. If you fall through the ice, a giant shark will appear and swallow you whole. Now you'll be returning to this room frequently and the ice will melt over time. Now Tiny, the giant shark, will even try to eat you and a raft you're using to navigate the room. It's pretty intense stuff. You'll start Arkham City with basically all the gadgets you had at the end of Arkham Asylum and there's even a line about why Batman doesn't carry all of his gadgets at the same time. Oh, and another equipment request. Did you ever consider a bigger belt? I did. Too heavy. Slowed me down. Just like in Asylum and the whole series in general, you'll unlock new gadgets and upgrades as you progress. The biggest upgrade is to your grappling gun. Now in Asylum, you rarely needed to glide around as Batman, but seeing as this is an open world, gliding as Batman is a necessity. With that, there is an upgrade to the grappling gun that will accelerate its grappling speed and you'll launch yourself into the air so you won't need to stop gliding. Batman can also now dive bomb, which is not only badass, but you can use it to gain momentum to glide again with more speed and regain some of the gliding height. Now boss fights are varied in Arkham City and nothing you'll experience against normal thugs. Penguin requires a new gadget and avoiding attacks from Mr. Freeze's gun. You'll go up against Solomon Grundy next and if you thought this was another Bane or Titan goon fight you'd be wrong. You need to avoid Solomon Grundy's attacks while placing explosive charges down with the gel. Now in this boss fight the game teaches you quick use buttons for your gadgets rather than traditionally equipping them and using them. It's brilliant controller design and by the end of your time with Arkham City, most of these prompts will be second nature. Anyway, the fight with Solomon Grundy is cinematic and isn't a simple dodge and attack and dodge again. You'll then go up against Raish, not fucking Raz, Raish Al Ghul. Now, am I pronouncing this right? Mr. Raz Al Ghul? No, you're not! Now you're going after Raish because his blood is needed to help make a cure for the Joker and yourself. It was all a lie. There's nothing wrong with you. Nice of you to say, but you of all people should know there's plenty wrong with me. Take my a quick recap here. Basically, the Joker is going to die soon due to the Titan formula killing him through his blood. Joker infects you, but also donates a heap of his blood to hospitals all over Gotham. It's a fantastic plot device that weaves a heap of Batman's rogues gallery naturally into the story. You'll need to go after Mr. Freeze, who's been caught by the Penguin. You'll then need Raish's blood, which introduces not only new enemy variants, but Tim, Drake, Robin appears. Raish's fight is a bit simple, but just like the fights in Arkham Asylum, it breaks up the constant combat and predator moments. By far, the best boss fight in this game is against Mr. Freeze. It is the first predator-based boss fight in the game as well. Mr. Freeze has frozen the gargoyles in the area and you'll need to avoid Mr. Freeze, stun and attack him by surprise. Now, each time you damage him though, he'll learn and adapt. As you can see, I sneak up behind Mr. Freeze, stun him and after I've dealt damage to him, he'll activate engines on the back of his suit so I can't sneak up behind him. That is the last time that will work on me. If you jump through the floor grates and attack him, he'll then freeze the vents so you can't go back into them. This is a really smart boss fight that'll force you to use different methods and techniques that you normally wouldn't use to take him out. Oh, come on. There's always something to learn. Let's start with getting your ass kicked 101. We also have a boss fight that we should have got at the end of Asylum, and that's a fight against a normal fucking Joker. Well, sort of. You'll fight the Joker alongside his normal goons, and after a while, his one-armed brute will return alongside a Titan-infected goon just like you faced in Arkham Asylum. This is a simple fight, and it's basically standard combat like you've been playing for two games now, but this boss fight is challenging. Managing multiple enemy variants on top of the Joker, who will not get knocked out, can be pretty fucking hard. 
It's also a lot better than the avoid and pull down fight we got at the end of Arkham Asylum. Besides having a fantastic story, Arkham City is also the first game in the series to have side missions. Yes, Arkham Asylum had the Riddler challenges which return here on fucking steroids in Arkham City, but you'll feel more like Batman having to manage and deal with multiple threats and issues at the same time. There's mangled and mutilated bodies around the city, assassinations from long and impossible ranges, Nora Freeze has been kidnapped, and you'll even help Bane destroy Titan canisters that have made its way out of the asylum. On top of that, you'll also be able to play as Catwoman in her own story, and obviously once you've finished Arkham City, you'll be able to roam around free and do all these side missions. Now Catwoman obviously plays different to Batman. You'll be quick and nimble, but she won't be able to glide around the map because cats can't fly. Catwoman will also have a smaller health pool to Batman, but also have access to gadgets that Batman doesn't. Now after you finish the main campaign 2, you'll be able to finish off Catwoman's story, which continues on just past the end of the campaign. What's even cooler is some of Batman's rogues gallery will only appear in Catwoman's story arc. What is a massive shame though is you'll be able to actively swap between Catwoman and Batman in Arkham City after you finish the game to free roam around, but you can't play as Robin. Sure. Okay. Arkham City improves on Arkham Asylum in every way. Honestly, I can't think of something the Asylum does better than City. Hell, even the suit damage Batman takes in Arkham City is more realistic and creative and the bat emblem on his chest looks cooler too. At the end of Arkham Asylum, Batman's suit looks a bit rough and you'll take your first bit of damage after your first fight with Bane. In City, you'll take damage basically immediately after you get the suit. In cutscenes, if Batman gets shot at or avoids an explosion or gets shot at by Mr. Freeze or more, his suit will take the relevant damage. Two-Face shoots Batman right in the chest and you can immediately see the body armor under the suit. At the end of Arkham City, Batman's suit is completely fucked. He's bleeding, his cowl has been scratched and dented and more. I absolutely love the attention to detail here. Also, for whatever fucking reason, if you're not a fan of this suit, you can change Batman's outfit. There's a few outfits available, such as the iconic blue and grey, the Earth-1 outfit, the animated series, and even Batman Beyond. Now, it's worth noting that different outfits will not take damage. So if you're running around in the Sinestro Corpse Batman outfit, his cape will not rip and tear like his standard suit will. Arkham City is one of the many few video games that I feel like this world actually feels alive. You'll overhear random prisoners on the ground talking about Batman, the Joker, Two-Face, whatever or whoever is really going around in Arkham City. Hugo Strange makes references to Metropolis and Keystone Cities. These don't just feel like Easter eggs and references, besides the fact they obviously are, but it actually makes it feel like a real world. Even though there isn't civilians running around, well, it's a prison, duh, this Arkhamverse feels more alive than any GTA title. Arkham Asylum feels like you were playing as Batman while Arkham City makes you Batman. You'll brood on rooftops, glide around the city as henchmen react in fear to your presence. Hell, even the wind and snow landing on your cape just feels badass. There aren't many things that don't work in Arkham City and honestly it might be one of my favourite games of all time. Now it's worth noting though that there is some clipping like in the previous game. Batman's giant back muscles will clip through his cape and when you pick certain outfits, the talons will clip through his cape. Now I don't remember the clipping being this bad in the original game, again because I'm playing the remaster, but I wear glasses and my memory's pretty shit, so who knows. There are also some other issues I have, but they're not really Arkham City related and I'll get to them in other videos. Now the ending of this game also has the Joker die, and while in the moment it's world shattering, the future entries in this universe feel like the ending should have been undone and retconned as the Joker returns in some way, but again, we'll get to that later on. Also, I found this weird. It's not really a negative, but after you beat up Tiny the giant shark when you go after the penguin, he never appears again. If you fall into the tank later in the same game as Batman or Catwoman, you'll just grab the nearest ledge and pull yourself out. Probably the only other issue, and that's really a nitpick, is Hugo Strange is the main villain for the game and he's barely in it. Hugo is in the game at the very start of the game and he'll randomly announce how long until Protocol 10 and that's really it. He'll appear in the cutscenes towards the end of the game and then you'll go after the Joker again. These games are very Joker focused and honestly that's not really a bad thing, but if your big bad is Hugo Strange, make him more of a threat rather than just a start and an end point. Look at what you've done. It's glorious, isn't it?
Arkham City is the perfect sequel in video games. It's the Empire Strikes Back of the Arkham series and resolves basically every issue I had with Asylum, but also improves and gives us the players new things in nearly every way. We get new enemy variants, new gadgets, side missions, more villains, a real boss fight against the Joker, and there's no boss fight in this title that is immediately after the other one. The graphics, the attention to detail, the story and the ending, fuck son. If you've watched this video and not played Arkham City, I beg of you, please find a copy of it and play it as this is what Batman is all about. Every single version of Batman we've gotten in live action movies can't hold a candle to this universe and the only thing better than the Arkham series is the 90s animated series. And this game works sort of like a spiritual sequel to the animated series. If you haven't played Arkham City in the past couple of years, I highly recommend going through and playing these titles one after the other. It's like going back and watching the original Star Wars movies or the Lord of the Rings movies when you haven't watched them in a while. Everything holds up perfectly. Now I hope you're enjoying these retrospective Arkham reviews as we get ready for Gotham Knights. Obviously Gotham Knights isn't based in the Arkham universe, but its gameplay, its presentation, its inspiration is 90% of these Arkham games. The next video will be a shorter one as I'll be doing a video on Harley Quinn's Revenge, which takes place after Arkham City and the death of the Joker, where we play as Robin.